Radio, Paul Hicks, YouTube channel, older as optional. We're heading to a place called Scorefield Island. Uh, over the next two days, we're hoping to uh, go spearing, fishing, catch heaps of fish out in the shipping channel, and we're hoping to camp over at uh, Schoolfield Island, and we're hoping to see some whales. Uh, so stick around, look out for the footage. Should be an epic trip. I really think this is going to be a cracking episode. Make sure you boat. watch. There was the four of us, uh, Callum, uh, Leanne, and Chloe, and myself, and we're off to the mighty, beautiful Schoolfield Island. We had magic conditions, as you see, for the trip out. A slight northerly, about two to three metres per second blowing from the north. Schoolfield's about a 50 kilometre trip out, as you can see. We go past from Mackay Harbour, past St Bees and Keswick on our left, uh, the most beautiful islands. Uh, we continue to head out. The weather conditions continue to be amazing, quite spectacularly beautiful. Uh, we did. We did get to see our whale. We saw a mama bear and her bubba bear are off to our right hand side, which was really great for the girls. They thoroughly enjoyed that. We continue on our trip to Scorefield Island with magic conditions the whole way. Uh, that constant uh, northerly blowing for about two, three meters per second provided us with epic conditions to get to Scorefield Island. We arrived at Scorefield Island and it was, as expected, beautiful. Uh, here we are setting up uh, for the overnight. Callum setting the anchor. Leanne's uh, starting to carry the boxes and the fridges up to the uh, area. And uh, we're settling in for a night on Scorefield Island. How exciting. Hi, I'm Callum. All the resort. We're Look. here in the great unknown. Walking through rapids. How's that? Oh, that was awesome. That water is... Streaming through, so we've got a king tide, not king tide, but a big tide. Yeah. It's like a it is, isn't it? Hole in there. And Chloe was saying this was empty, what, 10 minutes ago, Chloe? Yeah. Literally 10 minutes ago. And then the, you can see it coming through. You could see Cullum in there before, how fast it was coming through. Can you believe we had this magnificent, luxury, paradise place all to ourselves? Just the four of us, it was magnificent. Here's where we were camping up on the beach there on Scorefield Island. Next minute, the wildcat turns up from Mackay with 40 people on board to ruin our peace and our tranquility. I couldn't yeah. believe it. We had the whole island to ourselves and the next minute we're swamped by all these people. Anyway, I guess nature is there for everybody to enjoy and I just have to share with them. We then decided we'd go uh, fishing out in the bay in uh, Refuge Bay just out in front of where we camped. And I've told you several times that I'm not a guru of a fisherman by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just a punter having a go. And I take you along for the journey. I'm not a guru, just a guy. But what I do get a huge joy out of, and I'm sure if you love fishing you'd be the same, is take people out fishing for the first time to see their joy as they catch a fish. And Chloe's got a fish, but she's been bricked. So her husband, Chloe, um, Callum, yeah. like any good man, he jumps in the water oh, to unhook oh, this oh, fish from being boy. bricked. And watch Quick, Chloe's in. response as she boat. catches this fish. Very nice. Callum, look at it! Hold on. Just oh my gosh, Chloe. That's Cal, a good look at it! Can I eat this? Yes, of course. It's got to be 30 centimetres, but I'll take that's it will and truly 30. Oh my that's goodness, good Callum, fish. look at it! I know. Did you do anything, Callum? Don't do it. Yeah, I, I oh got it free. Gosh, it's so big. Can I let it go? <laughs> Look at him. I think, we're on, I think we're on to another bluey. Oh, this has been really good fun. Look, we'd be in half a metre of water at best. We were just saying everything we've ever done and learned about catching blueys, we're breaking that rule. But uh, we're catching a few, decent size, or oh, reasonable size, I should say, and uh, lots of fun. Um, oh, it's. What is it? Actually, let's say. Um, I don't even know what that is. is. That's um, that's I do know what that is. I caught one on Mission Beach. Oh, yeah. Do you have a Timu addiction? Let us know in the comments if you've got a Timu addiction. Um, my daughter-in-law possibly has a Timu um, challenge, she would call it. But this little tent we bought on uh, Timu for nineteen dollars, and it's amazing. It's a fantastic little Timu tent for $19. It's got a fly, it's comfy, easy to set up, and it's really tiny to put together. Timu tent, thumbs up for the Timu tent.
So here at Schofield Island, um, over here with the uh, land and the kids for a bit. Um, see the boats are high and dry with Myrtle there. The tide's coming in fast. But man, it was a rough night last night. That northerly blowing straight down the channel here. It was a rough night watching the boat. A few sleepless nights. It was beautiful today. We have a westerly blowing. Um, you can see up into the camping area there. Callum and Chloe are down there collecting oysters. They got some yesterday and they cooked them up and they were quite beautiful. Um, very enjoyable, but it is magnificent here. Well, as you can see, Myrtle's um, high and dry there. <clears throat> it was a rough night last night. Um, if you can envisage, if you look behind me, um, we're facing out into the bay, and that's, um, I've got some other pictures here, but that's a straight north, um, and the wind was coming from the north, so the tide, the wind, everything was coming from the north. We double anchored just to be sure, Normally always if you watch the channel have an anchor at the back, we didn't worry about that. But uh, double anchor at the front and uh, it held, but I was drastically worried that we are going to wash up on some of the rocks up here. Uh, in the middle of the night there's a couple of anxious looks as Leanne and I had a look out the tent. Um, Leanne lost her bearings once <laughs> and uh, looked out the wrong direction of the um, swag and looked towards the, uh, the land, which you can see behind me. Uh, Leanne looked towards the bush and couldn't see the boat and woke me up saying the boat's gone, boat's gone. But she wasn't even looking at the, uh, <laughs> he wasn't even looking in the ocean. But no, we got through the night. Um, it was probably everything against us for the night in terms of the tide, the, the wind, the breeze, everything. And it was blowing a gale. Um, but we got through, we're okay. The boat's just coming back um, onto the water now. It should be floating within the next 10, 15 minutes. We've got a couple of hours left. We're gonna do some fishing. Um, Callum and Chloe are off collecting oysters at the moment, which I've been cooking up, which are quite nice. And um, we'll probably head off around 12 o'clock to have a reasonably good run home. About 50 k's. I was talking to you just then about the concern I had if the boat had broken loose. And these are the rocks that we're really worried about. Um, the boat washing up on in the middle of the night with that northerly. So that's, that's, it is a, a real concern. Um, those rocks are nasty. Look, last time we were here, I was here with Luke, and uh, that exactly what happened to another couple that were here. Their boat had gone short, uh, loose in the night and washed up with the high tide as far as it could go and was stuck on the rocks. Now, what you need to understand is, particularly at the moment, we have really high tides last night. So, you know, the, the following day when you go to go out, the tide might not be as high and you are stuck there. And we're 50 k's from the harbour in Mackay, so it's a problem. You know, you can't get marooned at a high tide that's higher than the next one where well, you're stuck and he was he had to wait two extra days before he could get off to get home uh, Chloe you mentioned before which is a problem for us we don't have enough coffee to last us another two days but all's good that ends well so to give you a bit of an idea we're about mid tide now so halfway between the low tide and the high tide it's still a fair way out to Myrtle which you can see in the distance there last night uh, at midnight about two sorry the tide got right up to this point here. This was all underwater here last night. So she came right up, it was a high tide. So you can imagine the boat had washed up onto there, that would be a major problem. Here's mum, making lunch. Hello. Tell us about our camp, Lean. Oh, I really like this camping area, especially that undercover area and the seating. I mean, just right. like do everything. We've got to do our toilet review, let's go. 
Right, it's time for Land's Toilet Review. Okay, toilet review for Scorefield. Firstly, it's in the shade of a tree for most of the day, so that is a brilliant thing because the smell will be a lot less. It's a standard um, National Parks um, toilet, drop toilet. Um, recently been oiled. There was toilet paper when we arrived, which is the main thing, and it doesn't smell, so it's. Um, I'll give it a, for a national park in the middle of the ocean, it's a brilliant toilet review. Give it a 9 out of 10. There were 50 k's from... 50 k's in the middle of nowhere. And someone comes and mows it and looks after it. Yeah. I don't think there's much mowing, but they do definitely no, they, come and look after yeah. it. All the timber's been oiled. There was toilet paper here when we arrived. So that's a great thing. So if you're the guy that looks after this place, thank you. Absolutely. What do you got here, Leanne? Ah, this is one of the outdoor areas at uh, Schoolfield. So if you don't get the undercover one, you still get undercover for the trees. So there's shade, uh, plenty of open space around it if to set up swags and tents. And the best view in the world. There's your view. Right, time to go home. I think it's going to be a rough ride. <laughs> Alright, we ready? Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. For about the first 10 or 15 minutes out of Refuge Bay, she was a tad rough, but it got substantially better. In fact, it glassed off for a beautiful trip home. If you like this content, we'd love you to subscribe, to like and to comment. We would really appreciate that. Please comment. Have you been to Schoolfield Island? Would you like to go there? Any questions you have about it, please ask us. And uh, if you like our content, we try and have new content out every Friday. Please join us, like and subscribe. Join our community. We'd love to have you as part of it.